Welcome to Test Prep Central. We are on calculator workshop number eight, transform functions. Uh, in example one, we're asked to graph and compare the function to its parent. The function is f of x equals x minus two quantity squared minus one. Uh, the parent for that would be the quadratic parent function x squared, y equals x squared. So first we wanna go and I will clear my memory, second plus, seven, one, two, uh, and I will go to the y equals and put in our parent function, which is x squared. So type x followed by squared. Using the down arrow, let's go to uh, y2 and let's put in our second function and that is our f of x. So open parentheses, x minus 2, close parentheses, uh, raised to the second power or squared, I'm pushing squared, and then minus 1. Okay, now to graph, we're going to turn on grid lines. So this is a really important part of this lesson, our grid lines. So go to second zoom, and on the third row, you will see grid lines. So arrow down and across and press enter to highlight grid line. And then you wanna use a square viewing window for this particular graph. So type zoom four, which is square. Now what that means is the shape of the little grid, you can tell the little uh, units are equally spaced on the X and on the Y, so you get a true shape to the graph. It's also a smaller graph. Now, when you do this, you should be able to look closely at the grid lines themselves and tell that this parent function, which is the blue function, is at zero, zero, the vertex is, and the vertex of this red function is right to down one. So we would say that the function f of x is translated two units to the right and one unit down. So it's two units to the right and one unit below the parent function. Okay, in example two, we're going to do something similar, but this time we'll use an exponential parent function. So let's go back to our y equals and clear the function that is there, and we're going to put the function 2 to the x power. So you'll type 2 and then raised to the x power. Okay, in the second function, we're not going to type the function exactly, but rather a transformation of this function. So how we do that is we go down to y2 and we type clear, so let's get rid of what's there. And what I want is to put a negative first and be sure to use the one below three. And I would like to put y1 next because that's the function that we've already typed in y1. So type the button vars, V-A-R-S, y variables. So you're arrowing right, one, one. Now notice that on your handout, we're gonna put in parentheses the x plus three. So open parentheses and put the x plus three. And in case you don't know, uh, you will learn as you do these things that this will translate the graph three units. And if you look at the graph in a moment, you'll see which direction. So let's take a look by uh, graphing. This is still the square window. So I'm just gonna press graph. And what you'll notice is the point uh, that this graph is reflected over the, the x-axis. So it's going down instead of going up. And notice the point zero, 01 uh, is actually going to be this point right here. So instead of going up 1, it's actually going below the axis, but it's left 3. So what happened is this function has been translated uh, three units left. Uh, and so now that's basically what this function notation is telling you is the three in the function notation. If you'll go back to your y equals, this plus three is translating the graph left three. Okay, so let's go on to example three. 
and we're going to clear out example one. So I'll type clear. And let's type in the absolute value of x. So those buttons would be math, arrow right to num, and press 1 for absolute value symbols. In the older calculators, they don't actually put the symbols. They just put the word, the letters A, B, S with parentheses. But those work just like the symbols. So you can still do the same thing I'm doing. You just won't look quite the same. All right, so we're doing absolute value of X. So let's go to the um, second row and let's clear out this equation. Now we're doing, in this case, negative y1 and then x minus 2 in parentheses minus 1. So we're going to basically translate it ourselves. And if you've had this in algebra, you should already know. But if not, you'll have it in the future that a negative will reflect the graph over the x-axis. So I'm going to put a negative first. And then I'm going to put the function it's, itself. So I'm going to type VARS, arrow right to y variables, 1, 1. And so there's the function. And now we're going to translate it two units to the right. So we'll type x minus 2 in parentheses to move the graph 2 to the right. And then it says to uh, translate the graph one unit down. So to do that, we'll subtract 1. All right, so we have reflected the graph of y equals absolute value of x over the x-axis. We have translated it right to and down 1 to produce this new graph. And then we're going to write an equation for this new graph momentarily. So let's hit graph and look at it and see what it's doing. Okay, so here you can tell this went from 0, 0, down 1, right 2. And now it's upside down, so it's been reflected over this axis. In fact, you would do that first and then move it. All right, so let's go back to y equals and see if we can type an equation that will do the same thing, but without using y1, without using the original function. So using your down arrow, let's go to uh, y3 and see what we can do here. All right, now if we want to reflect over the x-axis, we use a negative in front of our function, so that's no different. The function itself is absolute value, so we're going to use our absolute value symbols for this. So let's type math num 1, and in parentheses we will put x minus 2. Now notice that's in the parentheses here, it's actually inside the absolute value symbols and the function itself. So go to the right to get outside of your symbols because this minus 1 is not inside the absolute value. It would be separate. So we'll do minus 1. And be sure you're doing the subtraction, not the negative down here. This will actually multiply by negative 1, and we don't want that. Okay, so now we're going to change the type of function so that you can actually see this better. And that's what these little squares on the far left are for. So use your left arrow and go all the way to the left until that little square starts to flash like this. Then you'll type enter and a little menu will pop up like this. If you'll use your down arrow where it says line, we're going to change this by pressing the arrows on the calculator. So go to the right and look for the one with the bubble, like this one. And then type OK, or Enter, I should say. So type Enter, and it will set that and OK. So now you can see the bubble here. So when you type graph, what it will happen is it will graph the original graph, and do you see the bubble went right over the graph that we just did. So we now know that was the correct equation without the function notation. Okay, last example. We're going to compare the function f of x equals 2 to the x to the graph of g of x is equal to f of negative x plus 3 and write an equation for g of x. So let's go back to our y equals and let's clear this equation and type in our new parent which is 2 to the x. So 2 raised to the x power.
In y2, we're going to take y1 and we're going to input negative x in the parentheses and a plus 3 outside the parentheses. So using your down arrow, go to y2 and clear that out and then type y1, so that's V-A-R-S, right one to y variables, one, one. Now open parentheses and input a negative x. So we'll put a negative x inside. Close the parentheses and then type your plus three. Now I'm gonna go to my third row because I really don't want that there. So do my down arrow and let's clear you can leave that bubble there for now. We, we're going to need it in a minute, so we might as well leave that and type graph. Okay. Now notice this viewing window is kind of small. I'm really cutting off quite a bit of this graph. So to make it look better, let's do zoom 6, which is a standard viewing window. Okay, so now you can tell that the graph has actually been reflected over the y-axis and it has been translated up 3. So the point at 0, 1 is now at 0, 4. So that's our two things that happened to this graph. Now let's write an equation for this function without using the function notation. So if we'll go back to y equals, let's go down to y3 and let's type a function that will take the parent 2 to the x reflect it over the y-axis and move it up 3. Well to do that the x that's here for the exponent needs to be changed into a negative x. So start with a 2 then do your raise to the power and put a negative x for the exponent. Now be careful, you want to hit the right arrow to get off of the exponent before typing the plus 3, which is not part of the exponent. Okay, so now when we type graph, we're still on that standard viewing window. You'll see a bubble go right over the graph that was there. That's telling you you're right on the track. If that graph shows up somewhere else in the graph, then you'll know it is not correct and it is not the function that you want so that you would write the equation of that transformed function. g of x is equal to 2 to the negative x plus 3. Okay, so to remember to do these types of problems to compare functions, it's very important to turn on grid lines. That's second zoom. A square window is really the most helpful. That's zoom 4, but occasionally zoom 6 is necessary because it won't fit. And don't forget, you can always clear your memory if you make a mess and want to start over. Second plus 712. Remember, the best way to learn the calculator is to practice. So till we meet again, Practice, practice, practice.